Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at the Homerton and Fertility Center in London. And today I've been uh, asked to review a case which was sent by a colleague overseas. And I, I will try and answer a few queries which get sent from overseas, provided they come in a, a very clear format and I do, there's no to and fro questioning that goes on. And they, I'll usually answer them uh, depending on my workload. And if I'm in a busy workload, I will come back and answer it at some point. And I generally tend to find it very difficult if you give me a small bit of dribbling information, which I find you know it's very difficult to put it together over a period of time. So I'll say if you want to send it and send a complete history. And if I find it, it will be worthwhile discussing it, I'll get back to you and discuss it. So this was a case of polycystic ovarian syndrome. Uh, a, a young woman who had a BMI of 32, uh, she had oligomenorrhea, and again, what, what, what where, where is there insulin resistance? And let me put it this way, and, and I, I tend to say if, you're, if you're, there's a PCOS with irregular cycles, there is insulin resistance, because that is what makes cycles irregular, and that is what makes, uh, creates dysfunction of FSH and dysfunction of LH. So her FSH was 2.2, the LH 6.6, and E2 was 66 picogram per liter. And she was uh, planned for IUI. So in the first cycle, uh, you had 5 milligram of letrozole given for 5 days, followed by 75 of HMG for 8 days. A 22 millimeter follicle was seen. This was triggered by a, a dual trigger uh, of an analog in HCG. And... Um, and again, a lot of people have started using the dual trigger in IUI, and we don't have the evidence yet, uh, though its evidence in IVF seems to be much better. So in, this, in the second cycle, uh, in that cycle she was not pregnant, in the second cycle HMG was used 75 for nine days and there was no response. So the question I was asked is, you know, should we continue the same uh, dose of 75 for another 14 days? And, and I'll say yes, you should. And why? Because a large majority of patients will respond to that dose if you keep it fixed and without changing. Now, what are the advantages? And especially, I think, if you've come for the teaching session, which I do three times a year, and we'll go through the six or seven different protocols which are used in ovulation induction with gonadotrophins. But in short, the earlier you start increasing the dose, you risk multiple follicular growth. And since this woman had already responded to the earlier cycle with a combination of letrozole and HMG, I'll say stick to 14 days and then marginally increase it as every seven to eight days. My other question is, you know, why change a protocol when you achieve ovulation in one cycle? And because what does letrozole do? And letrozole is an aromatase inhibitor. And the greater the aromatase inhibition, the better is the FSH rise that tends to occur. And that's how letrozole works. And if it's worked once, and I would say, just use the same protocol again. Now, in this case, you know, why does the response change? In fact, that is what happens to PCOS. So have a look at my triangle. And a triangle I almost, almost always describe and what tends to happen in that triangle is that you have follicles which form the antral follicles. So if you have a look up there and you'll see they are the antral follicles and the antral follicles are in fact change cycle after cycle. And so in some cases you'll see 22 antral follicles which was seen in this case and sometimes you'll see 30 to 32 and that varies from cycle to cycle especially in polycystic ovarian syndrome. And also have a think about it. So a, a woman has a 34-day cycle and then that gets to 60 days and then that gets to 42 days and then that gets to 30 days. So it's an irregular cycle, which means that in some cases, the recruitment of follicles tends to work very well. So those are cycles where the ovary successfully reaches ovulation or attempts to reach ov ovulation. And in some cases, it fails. Why? Because it's numbers and it, there are just too many follicles out there and that changes in a PCOS cycle. In fact, you may give the same protocol again and again and the response may be different. And that's something which you, you, uh, which you need to have a think about. And how do you stop it? I don't think you can stop it in any way. The reason is, uh, how can you predict 
the recruitment of follicles. And I would say stick to going low and stick to keeping the dosage volume is the same and the incremental increase should be slower and that probably would give you a much better chance of pregnancy. Whether or not dual together works, I don't know. Frankly, I, I think it, it, it does have its benefits, but I'm, 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 not I'm, I'm still uncertain due to a lack of evidence. Thank you.